Let's go ahead and hit record. Uh, just so everybody knows, we are going to be recording today's event so that we can share all this information that we talk about with other students at UC Davis. Um, and thanks for logging on to Lunch Book Chats with the librarians. My name is Blaine. I am the student engagement coordinator in the Dean's Office for the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. And as we've transitioned into this work from home, learn from home, online classroom environment, um, we wanted to just create opportunities for you to learn about the resources that are available for you on campus and to connect with the staff who are working at various entities on campus to support student learning. Um, so I think we've got some great panelists from the UC Davis Library and really the purpose of the event today is to introduce the librarians, let you know who those librarians are, um, let you know how you can get in touch and access library resources, and just to learn a little bit more about how the librarians can help you and what they're able to do. Um, so we'll have them all come on throughout the event today and talk a little bit about what services they offer and also share some of their book recommendations. Um, we've got some people who love books and who have great reading material to share. A um, couple of housekeeping things, we are on Zoom, as you are all well familiar with. Um, for some of us, this is one of the first times we've done an event like this. So just bear with us with technology. We'll be screen sharing and asking some questions. Uh, if you have any questions during the event, feel free to use the chat feature. Um, and then we just ask that all participants keep their video and audio off unless they're actually on screen talking. Um, but that way you'll be able to see the videos that we share and see the, the person who's talking. Uh, so before we get started, if you guys can just put in the chat, we're curious if you've been reading a lot during shelter in place. Um, so go ahead and put in there like if you've read one book, if you've read a bunch of books, if you've been watching a lot of TV. Um, yeah, we're just curious. So feel free to share that information with us. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up our first librarian, who is Eric. Hey everyone, um, I'm a little curious what we see in the chat. Just to, just subscribe to Disney Plus. Oh, that, that definitely would take up a lot of time in terms of uh, uh, reading versus watching TV. I think I think that's one of the questions we have in the future. What counts as reading? Um, for the library, what we did was we created kind of a, a fun little video. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, my name is Eric Fossack. I'm a librarian over at Carlson Health Sciences Library, or at least that's where I would be physically uh, normally if we weren't stay in place. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's one of the best kept secrets of the library because it is a great place to study quietly, well, when it's open. Uh, my personal, uh, I work in student services um, and I also work as a health sciences librarian and my area of subject expertise and experience is veterinary medicine. So without further ado, what I wanted to do was uh, play this video for you guys to kind of give a nice little exposure um, as to what the library is about, kind of a little intro uh, article or I mean uh, intro video. Eric, I can't hear the music. Sorry, hold on. Is that better? It's very faint. Okay. 
a great promo video. Good, quick overview of what the library offers and even some tips on how to navigate the website. So thanks, Eric. No problem. You guys can see it, right? Yeah, it's on the screen. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you guys. It's one of the fun parts of online is you get to start seeing everyone's kids and pets and where they're sitting and what their bedroom looks like. So come on back up whenever you're ready, Eric. And we'll get ready to introduce our next panelist. Um, so the next person who's gonna come on screen to talk with us is the head of student services at the UC Davis Library, and that is Elisa McManus. Yes, hello. Um, welcome, welcome Melvina and Sue. I see you're here too. Um, we're glad to be with you here today. Um, and I'm just gonna share my screen here for a minute. Um, can you all see the UC Davis Library webpage? Yes. Oh. Oh, great. And oh, I think there's someone in the waiting room. Is one of the other hosts able to admit, admit that person? I just did. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Elise McManus and I'm head of the student services department at UC Davis Library. And I'd like to briefly show you how to access some of our resources uh, via the library's website, um, which you should see in front of you here. So, um, I'm not going to go through it, it um, exhaustively, but I did want to point out that we do have a special web page right now. Um, it's called our Cronus Virus page, and it has information specific to library operations during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic when we're under shelter-in-place orders. So the libraries are physically closed um, right now. So I'm just going to click here on that page so you can see it, and the and kinds of um, links we have here about how to um, get in touch with us and how to get information. Um, for those of you who are, um, are with us, um, question for you, um, have you tried to access the library resources from off campus this quarter? Let me see if I can see my chat here. <laughs> Or if anyone can tell me if there's anything in the chat window. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm pulling up my chat window now. Oh great. Melvina, have you had any trouble using the VPN this quarter? I don't have any trouble. It just got disconnected, so I just have to reinstall it. Okay, oh good, good. Glad to hear it, because I think that's one of the things that um, people had run into a little bit this um, quarter. So we do have information at the top of the page here about how to access um, our materials from off campus using our virtual private network. Um, and so as you mentioned, you have to be sure to have the app, the Pulse of Care app um, available to you. And then um, we do have step-by-step -step directions. Here they are for downloading and setting up Pulse Secure. And the other thing we had run into is that the campus itself also has a virtual private network. So sometimes folks are logged into the campus VPN rather than the library VPN. So that can be, so just be sure that you're logged into the library VPN. And then I'm gonna scroll down a little bit further and jump down to the student support and study space area here and just want to make sure that you know that we're um, available to you now and to help. We do have Zoom um, drop-in hours from Monday through Friday from 10 to 5 and all you have to do is just click here on this link and then we have other links on our website. I'll show you from the, the home page um, too uh, where you can just click through and there's a librarian logged in and waiting to answer your questions. You can also make virtual appointments um, with any of our librarians as well. 
Uh, the library, as I mentioned, is closed right now, um, but we do have a 24-hour study room that's open. It's on the north side um, of Shields Library, and you can get to it by swiping your campus ID card. And then I'm going to go ahead and click through here to um, this research assistance link because I mentioned that you can make appointments with the librarians. You can do our Zoom drop-in. And here's another link to our Zoom drop-in service. We also have an email address uh, for the department, which is right here. And our colleague, Lee, who you'll meet in a little bit, he's the one who responds to those questions or forwards them to the librarian, especially, for example, if your question has to do with agriculture and environmental sciences, he'll get it to the right person, such as Layla or Ruth. We also have a 24 seven um, chat with a librarian. There's also a link from our homepage and it is staffed by University of California librarians, but sometimes like if it's um, overnight, like let's say you have a question at 11 PM, you might get a librarian from another university besides University of California answering your question, but anything they can't help you with, they will make sure to forward to us for follow up. And then here's a form you can fill out um, for research questions uh, in addition to it goes to that same email address that I showed you up here at the top of the screen. And then just before um, I introduce um, my colleague uh, Ruth Gustafson, I'm going to go here to the library homepage. And then I just want to make sure I might have to reshare. Can you all see the, the library homepage still? Hope you've been able to follow along when I'm sharing my screen. Yes. yes. Okay, great. Uh, so here just wanted to show you the um, chat box and then also the library hours. So you can see here that we do have um, on the homepage a link to our drop-in service. So again, you can just cl uh, click through here um, to get to the link. And then also here's our 24 seven chat where you can type in your question and that's you can do any time of the day and then um, here is a link again to our drop in service. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and now click through to this here contact a UC Davis subject librarian. And then I'm going to introduce um, my colleague uh, Ruth Gustafson, who's one of the ser uh, student services librarians who works with the College of Agriculture and Environmental uh, Sciences. Okay. And yeah. oops, I think I was going to go to your name. For Let me go to your name first here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Oop, there we, whoops, here we go. Clicking on Ruth's name now. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, I do have a book an appointment um, button. It's available from my course guides um, directly um, from the subject guides, which we will be showing you in a minute. It's actually available by clicking on the pitch, uh, my name right next to the pictures. So, Hi everybody, and uh, let's go ahead, Elisa, and go to the um, subject guides list. And since we are talking with College of Ag and Environmental Sciences, uh, this is a series of guides, not only to specific departments or majors, but also topical areas that might be of interest to people in the College of Ag and Environmental Studies, or Sciences, sorry. Um, and one of the things that I want to make sure that we let you know about is that the UC Davis Library is the largest agriculture library west of the Mississippi. Um, and part of the reason for that strength is not only the wealth of programs that we support, but that we have collections that are world class in four areas in agriculture. Um, one you might guess, which is winemaking or enology, and then of course the grape growing, which is viticulture. And I, I'm going to have Elisa go ahead and click on the Animal Science and Wildlife Biology Guide. This is actually where two other of our world-class collections reside. So that would be anything to do with pollination biology, honeybees, beekeeping, bee products. It, it's very, very broad. Anything to do 
uh, with pollinators of any sort. So that would be moths and bats and insects such as ants as well. Um, then the fourth area is actually a very narrow area, but it's always a surprise to the people who might do research in this area, and that is nematodes. So if you're not familiar with nematodes, there are these worm-like little creatures that pretty much exist in every place in the world. Um, so they exist in the soil as a beneficial organism to help with soil health. They exist um, uh, in the air and they exist in water. They also exist in ice, so they have been found in the Arctic and the Antarctica. Um, if you take the biomass, you will actually see that the biomass of nematodes um, are the largest in the world, for a very interesting little fact. Um, so we have a very uh, narrow collection in that area, but it's what's related to agriculture. So it would be nematodes that are beneficial, so those would be the ones in the soil, ones that are uh, pests, so there are definitely a lot of problems with nematodes dealing with plants. Um, once it impacts vertebrates, uh, animals of any sorts, then that goes to the veterinary side, Eric's area, um, or also impact on humans as well, because some nematodes cause disease in humans. Um, and you may know that there's a very famous one that's used for model organism studies, which is C. elegans. So you can kind of understand why we have that interesting collection. So that probably explains why our animal sciences and animal related collections are the largest in the University of California because we do support all these amazing programs from veterinary medicine to the only program for animal science and so on. But overall, again, the ag collections uh, and resources are um, really, really extensive. So we help you take advantage of them. Um, I just wanted to also uh, have Elisa, if you'll click on my name, when you're at the uh, subject guide, getting to my appointments, you'll, you will need to click on my name and then you'll see that if you wanna click on that blue button for book an appointment. Um, not all of us do the book an appointment, but um, if you do see that button, just take a look and see what kind of offerings we have. Um, I do a lot of sessions for writing in the science classes and um, students should be aware that if they don't have a topic, make sure you schedule a little more time, 40, 40 minutes to an hour. If you've got your topic and you just want some search tips, to a half hour is plenty fine. That'll work uh, very well. And I think that's pretty much all I was going to say um, and look forward to talking to you a little bit later about the books I'm reading. Oh, and I should introduce Layla. I'm so sorry. Here's my colleague, Layla. <laughs> and Hello. she's in the researcher services area. And she's going to talk to you about the resources and areas that she supports. Hi, everybody. My name is Layla Kabugos, and I'm a subject specialist librarian in the researcher services department, which does many of the same things as student services. Um, you are welcome to get in touch with me from my profile um, or that list of subject librarians. My email is probably the best way to contact me, um, but I also use uh, voicemail. So you can dial that phone number and leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Um, or you can um, drop into our research consult service and I'll be there periodically. Um, we rotate through. Um, and so I specialize in, um, if you are in plant sciences or plant pathology, or if you're a graduate student in the soils or biogeochemistry grad group, um, I'm gonna be best positioned to help you. My background, um, I have a master's in botany and um, work experience in bioenergy and uh, rooftop garden research and the organic seed industry. So I have a variety of, of research interests, um, but regardless of what you're doing in the plant sciences, um, I'm happy to help you. And I also work very closely with colleagues um, who specialize in agricultural economics, um, viticulture and enology. Um, so I can always uh, introduce you to librarians with specialized expertise uh, that matches your research. So um, I won't show you the path to connecting with me because it's the same as for the other librarians, except that I don't have an appointments calendar that you can automatically choose slots like Ruth does. 
just get in touch with me and we'll make an appointment. Okay. Thank you, Ruth and Layla, very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead before we um, start our our chat about what we're reading. Um, introduce you to the other librarians and staff in the student um, services department that are available to help and support you. You've already met um, Eric and Ruth, and now I'd like to introduce you to my colleague uh, Roberto Delgadillo. Hello, all. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> Basically, um, obviously, you don't know, cover like everyone else here a number of different disciplines. And so I actually won't take up too much of your time other than to say that should you have any questions in terms of how to get a hold of me, that information you can readily find on the pages that refer to people within the specific department. But long story short, I pretty much cover a number of humanities and social sciences within uh, student services. And so look forward to seeing what you're reading or sharing and, you know, going about. <laughs> Thanks, Roberto. Um, sure. Matt, Connor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. Yes, I'm Matt Connor. I'm uh, with Eric, actually, based out at the Carlson Health Sciences Library, and I help out there. But I also have interests in uh, UWP. Um, the writing program, and as you probably know, through the uh, Writing Across the Disciplines um, initiative, they cover um, subject material in almost anything, um, so I work closely with them. I also have a particular interest in citation managers, um, software that can help you organize and format uh, references for your work. Uh, this is largely based on personal experience. Um, I wrote a PhD dissertation the old-fashioned way with paper and print and notebooks, and it was a huge ordeal. Uh, but since then, I've used citation managers for other publications, and it's been a complete transformation and much easier. So I really want to share that with you. Um, all my colleagues can speak to this, but I have a particular interest in this. So you can contact me, um, as with everyone else, through the library website, and look forward to working with you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Melinda, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Melinda Livas. I am one of the physical sciences and engineering librarians. So my areas basically lend themselves to mechanical, automotive, aerospace engineering, also cover statistics, mathematics, and transportation studies. Uh, just like my colleagues, I do have a subject guide. So uh, you feel free to contact me um, via the subject guide. And I'm uh, looking forward to sharing with you the books that I'm currently reading. Thanks, Melinda. And last but not least, um, our colleague Lee Riggs. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Lee, and I do a lot of uh, instruction and outreach projects here at the library. Um, and so if you ever took a tour of Shields Library, we may have met there. And as Elisa mentioned, I answer a lot of email questions that come through. I help out with our chat. I also work part-time in our special collections and archives department. So if you're looking for primary sources or any kind of uh, interesting uh, vintage materials, uh, I may have met you there. So um, looking forward to our chat about books and I'll take it back to Lisa. And mute myself. Sorry, I think I accidentally launched the polling <laughs> while we were you were talking, Lee. Uh, Lane, should we do the second poll or more do it in the chat window? Yeah, let's go ahead and just have all of our panelists turn their videos on. And as promised, we're going to spend a little time hearing what books our librarians are reading and hear if they have any special recommendations. Um, but before we jump into that, um, I'll just kind of pull the crew right here. So I'm going to go through some different genres of books and just raise your hand if that's a genre that you would consider one of your favorites. So are you a novel fan? All right. How about nonfiction? All right. Biographies or autobiographies? Sorry, I don't have the poll, so I'll say yes to all of the above right now. <laughs> okay, that in three for three. How about graphic novels? Oh, a lot of fans. Julie, too. Thanks for voting in, Julie. Um, and then how about people who are thinking, does Netflix count? Not really a reader. 
<laughs> All right, awesome. Even our librarians. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and I will go ahead and start with Eric. Eric, what have you been reading? Do you have any favorites? Well, um, yes, I'm, I'm definitely probably um, more of a Netflix binge watcher than a reader, um, especially with, you know, uh, doing a number of things of, you know, like I, I tend to read articles and stuff like that, but I have been working my way through, no, I keep missing that mirror, uh, True History of Tea, uh, which was actually introduced um, at the Global Tea Initiative, uh, one of the colloquiums they had a few years ago. Uh, the author of this book uh, spoke, and he was interested in actually kind of really digging into the historical accounts to really understand what is the history of tea, because it's, it's, it's entrenched in as much mythology as it is um, historical records. So it was, it's a really pretty cool book. It's, it's erudite for sure. And what inspired me to read this besides the colloquium and the Global Tea Initiative, which is unique to UC Davis. It's a study of culture and science and tea. Um, a number of librarians here participate in it, including myself, and we do have a podcast. So for those that don't read or watch TV, you could do a podcast called Cha Chat. Um, and that's put out um, by me and I interview various folks uh, regarding Global Tea Initiative. But number two, this one I just finished, this is for all the tea in China. And for the video watchers on um, um, Curiosity Stream, you can actually watch a documentary on this, but it's about Robert Fortune, the Englishman who went to China, um, pretend, or, uh, uh, pretty much like a spy, uh, got into chi Chinese society, stole tea from China and tried to plant it in India. Um, so those are kind of my things. And if anybody has a great recommendation for a bicycling travelogue, I'd love to hear it because that's something I'm really into too. I want to, I want something about a bicycle, you know, bicycling story. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. What is your favorite type of tea to drink? Um, yeah, I always have to think hard on this because I love them all, but uh, oolong is my favorite. Um, I don't know about other folks, but, um, you know, that's something I want to throw out there. When we do have a physical space, um, uh, always come over. If you're doing any research, I'm happy to pour you a cup of tea. Awesome. Thank you. White tipped tea. I haven't had that. Is, does anyone know, is oolong a caffeinated? It sure is. Um, but it's not as much as black tea. It's okay. somewhere between green tea and black tea. Cool. All right, next up, let's go with Matt. Matt, what are you reading right now? Hi, um, yeah, let me back up a little bit to my literature background. That's what my training is in. And we have this um, idea that all reading is situated, depends on your context. So my context is I'm actually marooned in Hawaii here because of COVID-19 and didn't have access to my favorite books. So <laughs> the ones I came up with were, uh, lying around. So the first one is called Verses of the Dead, which is sort of a a type of romance. I wouldn't say romance. It's like a, it's a very weird hybrid of um, action genre, crime thriller, sort of comedy, intellectual knowledge. So it um, went back to a period when I was flirting with the idea of making a lot of money writing cheap romance novels. So that only got as far as me trying out different novels. And one of them happened to be this one, which was just outside the genre. It's um, Let's see, this guy who has double PhDs from Oxford, and uh, he's really brilliant. He works as an FBI agent. Um, so it's kind of the intersection of his, his erudition and crime and action um, all together, and it's just unbelievably well written. So I've kept going with that, and that's as far as my, my aspirations got with that. Um, the other one is um, called Vector Analysis, which is a textbook on a part of multivariable calculus. So I'm not a math geek um, by any means. I am more a case of alternative learning styles, I would say. So I didn't do all that great in college, but I had this idea that somehow the environment was just not right for me. I mean, the lecture mode and the problem solving and uh, discussion, I just didn't get it. So later on when nothing was at stake, I thought, well, why not give this a try and just kind of sift through this. And I've become what they call on the internet, um, a self studier So there's this whole population of people who just go around and read books and study math and science online. And you can find a lot about them through Amazon. People just go through these books and communicate. So it's this whole other alternative learning community. And I will say it's a, a peek into how the internet is just a complete wild west. You'll never know who you'll encounter. So I have um, emailed math professors saying, how the heck do you do this problem? And had all these interesting conversations and whatnot. So it's, it's kind of a, a side interest of mine, but those are the two things I'm working on now. 
So do you give yourself homework? You're reading these textbooks, you're self-teaching. Informally, I do. My big lesson is if you're stuck, just go on to the next problem. <laughs> I was getting so there's, multiple choice settings. There's no penalty. I just go on to something I can actually do. This is like on the <laughs> test. Do what you know first and come back to the hard stuff. So it sounds like so good always, go. <laughs> yeah, without always having the answer key, I sometimes have to do that. But I've been able to make forward progress over the scale of years, slowly but surely. That's cool. Lifelong learning. Yeah, absolutely. Now you probably do great in a college class. <laughs> like, um, yeah, depending on the subject, yeah. <laughs> After multiple tries at it. Awesome. It looks like we've gotten a couple of recommendations in the chat for bike travel logs, so check those out. And next up, let's move over to Ruth. I know you don't have a camera with you, but do you want to talk about your favorite books? And can you tell us where you got the picture with the, the panda bear, the koala bear? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, so the koala first, um, I actually did a, um, so I'm involved with an international association of marine science and aquatic science libraries and information centers. Just, we just call ourselves IAMS like, um, and um, we uh, have international conferences because we have the conference in each regional group's location each uh, year. So I was traveling to Tasmania and um, decided if I'm going to go that far away, so paid the airfare myself, but uh, did go to the conference on release time. But um, I'm going to see more of Australia than Tasmania. Um, so I was visiting colleagues who were at the Australian Institute of Marine Sciences in Townsville, which is a beautiful institute. Um, and then also I have a colleague who's at the Grimpra, which is the Greater uh, Barrier Reef Marine Protective Authority. So we just call it Grimpa. Um, and so got to visit. She has, they have an aquarium site and an amazing library about anything in dealing with coral reefs. Um, but they said, oh, you should go to this wonderful wildlife sanctuary called the Billabong Wildlife Sanctuary. So Billabong is a kind of a word for a swampy area. And so uh, as it happens, many of the animals there have been um, removed from the wild because they had injuries or they had problems and they can't survive. Uh, they can't be re-released. Um, and one of the things they do is that you have opportunities to hold animals. So. Um, I held the koala, that's the picture that you see, and then also a wombat, and my goodness, are they heavier than you think they are. They are so dense. I did not hold a baby alligator or croc, crocodile, because I was like, no. <laughs> you have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. And I don't... I don't know if Eric can put the picture of my two books there, because the, I, I can't hold them up for you, but it's the next year in Havana and the Barbara Kingsolver Unsheltered book. Um, they were on those slides. Um, so they're both kind of ag related, which is really interesting because anytime you talk about Cuba, so I picked this up because my choir sang in Cuba when uh, Cuba was opening up during the Obama years. And so we were there in 2016 had an incredible time. Um, the singing, um, singing with the National Choir of Cuba, just amazing. Um, but everything they say about the infrastructure is true and probably way worse than you think it is. <laughs> um, and um, so what's interesting is I picked this up because I thought, well, I wanna see what they say because this is a, in, in real time for when the book was written um, from 2017, a granddaughter who goes back to take her grandmother's ashes to Cuba and her grandmother was born and raised in Cuba and then was one of the population that left in 1958 to go to Miami. Um, and so uh, her grandmother's family was one of the more wealthy families and they were in sugar. So there's the connection with agriculture. And then of course, throughout the book, there are discussions of two of the major industries, which are rum. Um, yes, I did have some rum. Um, and um, tobacco um, and the cigars, of course, are world famous. Um, then, um, so, it's basically talking about being exiled. So being exiled from your home, whether or not you've ever been there. So she had heard stories from her grandmother her whole life 
about uh, the area in Havana where her grandmother lived and the people and the friends uh, and the family members that were left behind who chose not to travel and then the differences in their lives. So it compares and contrasts, which is really, it's tough to hear some of the stuff, um, but um, a really interesting read comparing and contrasting the two. The Barbara Kingsolver book, if you've read any of her other books, she does tend to have some kind of environmental or uh, natural sciences tie, and this one uh, also does. Uh, it also is in current time and in past time. So there is a family that is in a sense exiled. They are unsheltered, that's the title of the book, um, um, because they uh, had to leave the situation. The father is a professor and um, the college closes down. <laughs> Uh, and so he has to find a job somewhere else. And at the same time, her aunt dies and wills her, her house in um, a very rural area of New Jersey. Now, if you've ever been to New Jersey, New Jersey has a lot of agriculture. A lot of blueberries are grown there um, and um, many other uh, crops in the southern end. And so they're in an area that was named Vine Land. Um, and to my knowledge, there were no grapevines there, but um, the, the, the past part is somebody else who owned that house 150 years earlier, and uh, he is a science teacher, and um, he's in a new wedding, he's living in his wife's parents' house, and as already discovering that the house is falling down around them, they didn't know that when they moved in. And the people in the current also are dealing with the problem. So that's what the unsheltered is, is that the house is falling apart. Um, but there is a chapter in here called Shelter in Place. So I just thought it was very ironic because it does talk about um, even though you feel like you've got a home and you've got people who are, you know, your family that, that you don't always feel connected. And so he actually develops a connection with a next door neighbor who is a real life woman scientist in New Jersey who was very famous. She was a botanist and was particularly interested in uh, carnivorous plants. Um, so there's a lot of storylines that go between those. So those are the two and wildest thing ever, they are connected, the two books, which I did not expect at all. But in one point, they both talk about Scylla and Charybdis because they're caught between the whirlpool and the monster on the shore. And for the Kingsolver book, it's the house. The house is both the whirlpool and, and then the problems that are going on around them. Uh, and then in, uh, in Havana, it's the, you know, the woman in the current time uh, becomes involved with uh, someone who ends up doing sort of... Um, Anti, uh, anti the regime types of activities. And so she's pulled to a Cuba that's not her Cuba, but she feels like it is. And so Skill and Charybdis is actually mentioned in both. And then lo and behold, uh, the daughter of the protagonist in current time in Barbara Kingsolver's uh, book is a uh, vagabond uh, traveler and she ended up in Cuba. <laughs> And so there's a little bit of time spent about her, um, you know, how she ended up in Cuba. And, um, um, and I guess another thing is the connection is cars because the cars feature a little bit in, uh, uh, obviously in Havana, the beautiful old cars, which I got to see and didn't, didn't ride in, but because it was expensive, but um, there, yeah, so that, that's it. Very surprising connections, two totally unrelated books. I didn't think that was gonna happen. Very cool. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah, you hear about those old, really well-maintained cars in Cuba, and people are just still driving them down the streets. Yeah, and the Cubans will tell you the reason why they're still running is because there's Russian engines in them, not American engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some long-term resentment. All right, let's hear from Lee. Lee, what are you reading? All right, um, so I like to read a lot of different things and uh, um, the options that you mentioned earlier, uh, I hit almost all of those. Um, so I've just got a pile of books here that I've either am going to read right away or recently read. Um, first one 
John Lescois. He's a Davis writer. He writes detective novels. They're all set in San Francisco, which is interesting because that's just down the road. And but he lives and works in Davis and he's published a whole bunch of detective novels. Um, we have quite a few of his books at Shields Library. If I can share my screen real quick. Um, if someone can let me do that. Let's see here. No, okay, never mind. I was just going to show you what his books look like in our library catalog, but we have a lot of his books. So when, when we open up again, you can get actual you can, print. You can, you can share your screen. Books. Oh, can I do that now? Let's yeah. see what happens here. Um, all right. So here's my yeah, so this, this is the search, John Lesquois. Um, we've got about 17 of his books. And over on the right, uh, you can see some of the subjects, uh, some of the characters, and again, San Francisco as a location. Um, so anyway, so that's just something I've been reading. Another one, this is a library book. This is from uh, Davis Library. This is um, a history of the Donner Party. So um, some local history from back in the gold rush uh, days. I've been fascinated with the Donner Party and the Donner family for a long time. Uh, I grew, as a child, I heard about their story and the whole, the, the cross country uh, trek, the possible cannibalism, the actual cannibalism, uh, just as a child, that was very interesting. So this is a nonfiction, very new history. So that was kind of interesting. This is a biography. This is a campus author. Kern Holloman, he used to, he's a campus author. So that's something I've, uh, biography I've been reading. Little academic um, stories, short stories in Italian. So this gives me a chance to use my Italian uh, language skills. And this is um, One Night Stands and Lost Weekends. These are short stories uh, by Lawrence Block. Uh, this is my current guilty pleasure. So a lot of different things, um, and I get, you know, I, I'll read something and then I'll read something else by the same author and I'll kind of, so there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm working on, just whatever catches my eye, but a lot of different genres, because I have a lot of interest, so. Do you usually read one completely through and then pick up the next one, or do you just have a pile on your nightstand and you kind of go back and forth? Um, well, for example, this is short stories. So this was, I was reading in little bits and pieces, and then I would alternate that with going through a full novel. So it depends uh, from book to book. Some books you can read more easily in bits and pieces. Some things I feel compelled to go start to finish. So it, it right, no, no way to know. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Lee. Mm -hmm. All right, Melinda, you're up. What are you working on? All right, so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully I can um, share a picture of what I am reading. So let's see if we can get this to work. All right, so do you all see my screen? Right Let now, me Okay, hold on, let me try this again. All right, so let me stop sharing and, well, while that's trying to get my uh, technology to work here, what I am reading are two books. Um, and let, oh, I think I made, let me try this again. And here we go. All right, perfect. That's what happens when you have, all right. So what I am reading, um, I like, uh, um, I like a lot of spy books, anything similar, something like Mission Impossible, where you have, you know, multiple spies. So the book on the left is The Closer by Mark Dawson. Um, it's a really gritty government book, um, type, government type book, like the, he's the person the government calls when they want to clean up a mess, but don't want to get their hands dirty. So um, that's one of my favorite types of books. And then the book on the right, um, I'm reading through, it's the Lin Learner Centered Teaching. I'm always interested in improving my teaching skills. So 
this book is really focusing on uh, transformative teaching and learner-centered teaching, basically focusing on helping students to learn and to understand the importance of working more collaboratively in the classroom. So those are pretty much um, the uh, books that I am reading right now. Cool. So one kind of fun one and one educational. So good. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. How about Elisa? Elisa, you ready? Yes, I sure am now that I'm unmuted. Um, so for kind of um, fun reading, I do like mystery novels and I like ones where um, the authors have many, many books in the series. So I never, you know, I always have something else to read and I love how it builds, um, the mystery series build character arcs. Um, so one of the ones I'm reading, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'll put up a, oops, I, my background may not help, but um, so I don't think I could do this well with my virtual background, but um, there's a writer, her name's Donna Leone, and she, um, her mysteries are set in Venice, um, Italy, and I'm, re I'm book four of hers, and I think I saw on Goodreads, she's up to 29 now in her series, and this particular one is called Death and De Judgment, and the main character, which I should just know right off the hop, top of my head, he's a detective, Guido is his first name. Um, I think it's Brunetti. Um, and it's about, he's a um, detective in Venice and it's about his family and uh, also just the setting, um, talking about Venice, um, what the political, and, um, aspect is to living in Italy. Uh, it's, it's really fascinating. And, it kind of ties into my other book. Um, I'm a huge traveler. My absolute favorite thing in the world to do is to travel. Um, and at this point in time, I've been fortunate. I've been to all 50 U.S. states, Puerto Rico. I'm working my way through the Canadian provinces, and I've visited about 25 countries. Um, and so my husband and I are always looking to plan our next trip. And I don't know what'll happen with the pandemic, but we had been tentatively planning to go to New Zealand. Uh, we were in Australia um, last summer um, in Japan the year before that. So we kind of have an area that we're focusing on, but we wanted to go to New Zealand in October. So um, I picked out Essential New Zealand, um, which is a photo's guide um, to start helping us figure out where we wanted to go because the challenge with travel is two weeks is never long enough to really see everything but I kind of have the attitude well you never know you may go back and I mean it does happen when I went to Australia we went this past summer I had been once before in 2003 so you just never know you might get back to somewhere so um, New Zealand too especially with two islands and uh, just trying to figure out where we might want to go so that's what I'm reading right now. Oh, thanks, Elisa. Mm -hmm. All right. How about Layla? All right. So I am mostly a podcast consumer too, Eric. Um, so I do very little reading when I'm done with work. I'm tired of staring at text, but I do garden a lot. And so um, I've been enjoying during quarantine um, or shelter in place uh, getting to know the species that come to my garden. And so this is a picture that I took of what I think using uh, this book, oh, you can't really see it, California Bees and Blooms. You saw the cover of it anyway on the presentation. Um, I think that that is a mountain carpenter bee, a male, um, and, and it's enjoying um, one of the, the plants in my garden. So. Um, that's been fun because it's written by um, folks, uh, professors at UC Davis and UC Berkeley, um, specialists in entomology and botany. Um, and it's for gardeners and naturalists, and it tells you what plants you can plant to encourage and feed uh, pollinators and um, how to identify them, how to photograph them. So that's been lots of fun. Um, and then I also like to read cookbooks. We have a great cookbook collection at UC Davis. Um, and so I'll just put in the chat a recipe that I've really enjoyed from one of the cookbooks I have called Jerusalem um, by Yotam Adolenghi, who's a restaurateur and has fabulous ideas. Um, so I hope that you enjoy some of those. 
That sounds great. I'm going to have to try that. Thanks, Layla. So we've got time for one more book recommendation. So I'm going to toss it over to Roberto to hear what he's working on. Ah, let me unmute myself. Well, I'll just keep it brief, although I should say that um, before the pandemic and such, I would usually tackle on as many as 10 to 15 books at a time to basically cover uh, not only my discipline, but just my various interests. But unfortunately, since the pandemic, uh, you know, your attention is drawn elsewhere. So of late, I've switched more to audiobooks. So one of the books that I'm examining, for instance, that was listed is an interesting book that's more of a memoir rather than what perceive, what comes off in the title is a how-to manual, which is called How to Be an Anti-Racist. And it's basically the author's journey in trying to understand race relations and basically serves as a manifesto for how to deal with a number of issues that not only cover my discipline, but others as well. The other thing I'm also reading is a book entitled Circe's Lament, which is an anthology of female poetry. And that one gives me a better grasp. It's, it, I kind of say it's my assigned reading because my background is history rather than poetry. But within the English department, there is a strong interest in poetry. So I find that if I, I, as I, I find that as I familiarize myself with it, it generally tends to help a lot. And also quite frankly, it's short, it's sweet poetry that is. <laughs> and it does, you know, as we are facing the issues that we are facing, kind of does help me a great deal to cope. Um, basically, if I'm able to, I want to show you something if I can, um, just to give you a sense of what it is that I'm also interested in. I don't know if you see a, do you see the, the screen with library thing? Yeah. This will give you an idea as to the kind of books that I read. And this is a record of what I read since 1980. When I, when as a kid, I started reading books. So. You have read 4,500. Yeah. So this is typical of the kind of books that I read that cover my interests, whether it's music, graphic novels, poetry, my interest in World War II, sci-fi, anime, <laughs> the whole kid and caboodle. So then of course, being the nerd that I am, if I ever wanted to break it down by like, oh, what books do you recommend that are graphic novels? They're like, well, there you go. I read 1100, knock yourself out. So, you know. What a cool record too. You never forget what you've read. That's kind of why I, you know, kind of keep it as well. And so it's reflective of the stuff that I also create bibliographies for the exhibit. So these are the books that I read for the writ, the current, one of the last exhibits that we had, which was on the journey of immigrants and the undocumented. So anyway, I won't keep you too long, but this is typical of what I, you know, kind of tackle on and such and so forth. Awesome. So. Well, thanks so much. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in today. And again, we'll post this, but I think the biggest takeaway is that there's a lot of talented, friendly people in the library who are available to help out. Um, jump in if I miss anything, but ways that you guys can get in touch with the library are through the information desk. There was a 24 hour chat feature available. The library is offering drop-in hours on Zoom. I think that was Monday through Friday from 10 to five. Awesome. And then you can also connect with your subject librarians um, through the subject guides and book an appointment that way. So I know when I was an undergraduate student, I definitely did not take advantage of all the help with research and citation managers um, that the librarians offer. And uh, bibliographies just keep coming back to haunt you through grad school and beyond. So make sure that you practice those skills and learn from these people while you have them at your fingertips. Um, I put a link in the chat. We'd love your feedback on this event, um, whether it helped you learn what is available at the library or how to connect there. If you have any other feedback for us to consider for future events. Um, and we're really glad that you tuned on to hear our book chat. So thank Lane, you all. Lane, uh, Melvina was asking us where the, um, we'll post the recording. Oh, okay. I'm going to post the recording on, so we run a Facebook and an Instagram from the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences Dean's Office. It's C-A-E-S students is our handle. 
Um, so I will post that on the CAES students Facebook page. Um, and we also post all of our upcoming events, um, job opportunities, research opportunities, academic advising updates on that page. So it's a great place to just stay connected. Yeah, and I'll see about getting it posted on the library's Facebook page as well, and maybe somewhere else on our website. I'll have to figure that out. So thanks for that question. Yeah. Um, Alvina. Oh, good. I'm glad you had fun. And Julie, I'm glad you were able to join us too. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was fun for me. It was fun. It was great hearing some, I actually wrote down, I'm really interested in next year in Havana. I wrote that down for my book club. <laughs> Yeah, and Roberto put his library thing link in the chat window. So if you want to get, see a, a many, many possible book recommendations, uh, you could launch that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording then, Lane. I'll go okay. ahead and do that. And we can go ahead and sign off. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>